Hi, today I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about propane. Propane is a really nice fuel to use for a number of the projects that we're going to be showing you over the next couple of months. We use it for our hybrid uh, jet engine, we're going to be using it for our pulse jet engine, uh, we're going to use it for our pulse detonation engine and the liquid fueled engines that we're going to be building. The advantage of using propane is first of all it's relatively inexpensive, it's about six dollars a gallon in the US and more importantly because it has a low boiling point it vaporizes at room temperature and so it produces very efficient mixing with the air and gives you very good burn quality a lot of uh, diy jet engines actually start on propane because it's such a convenient fuel the other advantage is because it has a relatively high vapor pressure at room temperature between about 1 and 200 psi the vapor pressure within the tank can actually drive the liquid out of the tank and so you don't need fuel pumps which is a real convenience. The problem that you face though is that the way we obtain it locally here is that you do what would be sort of similar to an exchange program. You go to a local hardware store or a big box store you take one of these 20 pound commercial tanks. When you're empty, you bring the tank back and you pick up another tank that's full. So you can't do anything to modify these tanks, uh, but you're gonna need to have a different type of system for delivering the fuel because these tanks are designed to boil the liquid inside of the tank and deliver vapor out of the tube rather than liquid. It's more inconvenient to deal with and it, it's a disadvantage because the liquid itself is a better uh, fuel for a number of purposes. In addition, because the boiling is occurring in the tank, the liquid quickly cools at high flow rates and so the vapor pressure drops and so you get a varying vapor pressure during the extraction of the propane from the tank. We could modify the valve system here so that we have a pickup tube that would actually pick up the liquid in the bottom of the tube. But once we modify this tank, we can't uh, utilize it for the exchange system. Once we decide, though, that we're willing to modify a tank, we could actually pick up one of the uh, fiberglass tanks that's uh, available that has the advantage of being substantially lighter than the steel tanks and because it's clear, allows you to see the fluid levels in the, in the tank without necessarily weighing the tank all the time. The tank that I'm going to be transferring this liquid to is a high pressure CO2 tank. I just happen to have a number of them. It's not necessarily optimal for these projects, but it's free because I've got it. And it also has a pickup tube that goes to the bottom of the tank so that when the vapor is pushing down on the liquid, it pushes the liquid out of the end of the tube. If you warm this tank, you cool this tank, the natural differential will drive the liquid or the vapor over into the other tank. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to warm this tank to about 100, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and that'll be sufficient uh, in order to drive the liquid in there fairly quickly. Just kidding. There's a safer way to do this. Let me show you. I have a galvanized tub here with about two and a half gallons of water and we'll heat it up to about 100, 120 degrees with a burner and then we'll place the commercial tank in here and that will keep that tank warm while we do the transfer. The burner, once it's ignited, will take about five, seven minutes or so to bring this water bath up to the point where it's pretty uncomfortable to put your finger in. You're within the 100, 120 uh, degree range and that'll be fine for doing the transfer. All right, we're at about 118, 120 degrees. I just barely can't put my finger in there. So we'll take the commercial tank here, put it in the here. Quickly, it'll pick up the heat from the container. And then if we look over here, what I have is a scale. What the scale will weigh is this tank empty. And so we put this on here. This is the only way we can determine the volume that we've got in here because we can't see the level. Now as you see it's 14.5 kilograms right now. Just to protect the scale from the water flow is we'll take this off the scale, move this aside, 
And then I simply have a garden hose uh, with a little rag wrapped on it. We're going to cool this. I want you to listen carefully because even before we cool this, this being at uh, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit right now, when I open up this tank, and I open up this tank, listen carefully. You can hear the liquid being transferred. It's actually vapor that would be condensing in here. Now I'm going to surround the top of this tank with another rag and turn on a little bit of water. Now as the water continues to flow down here, it comes from a well that's very, very deep and it's at around 50, 55 degrees and it will carry away the heat of the vapor that's being transferred from the warm tank into here. Very quickly, this tank will fill if you have a very large uh, pr uh, pressure differential or temperature differential, which is basically the same thing. In this mode, if you wanted to weigh the tank continuously, you just put a plastic bag or something to protect the scale from the water flow that's obviously going to be pouring all over the ground here. But typically 15 minutes and you should have this tank filled up as full as you want it. If you have one of the fiberglass tanks, you can actually watch the level go up and that's a lot more convenient than having to reweigh the tank. This is a 10 pound CO2 tank and this tank will be able to hold approximately half the volume of one of these commercial tanks. So therefore, we have to weigh this thing a couple of times just to make sure that we don't overfill it and fill it completely with liquid, which could actually be dangerous. We always want a little bit of uh, vapor for expansion. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. I just turned off the water supply. What we're going to do is take the wet rags off of here, throw the hose out of the way, and then I'm going to close the valves and to determine how much of the propane that we transferred, we're going to go ahead and weigh this guy again. I've calculated that this tank will be full at 18 kilograms. Let's see what we got. So we got about 15.9, so we've added one and a half kilograms in about a minute and a half. So it's obviously very quick, it's relatively easy. You'd make it even more efficient if you were to do several tanks at the same time. One warning though is do not do this indoors. You're dealing with flammable liquids, you're do dealing with high pressure flammable gases. But you could do this 12 months out of the year, whether it's cold or warm outside, it's just the temperature differential that matters. That's all that matters in getting the transfer to occur. We're going to be hooking this liquid propane tank up to our hybrid jet engine in about a week and we'll be posting that video. So I want to thank you very much for watching. Uh, as I said before, please subscribe. And just in case you don't get the notifications, it doesn't hurt to click the bell. I wish you a wonderful afternoon.